We are very fortunate, you know, in these days to be yogis in these days, but the yogis of long ago tapped into this. If we break, and we're going to give a, a bastardized, fast version of quantum physics. So if we break down this corporeal mass, reality, right? Reality. If we break it down, all of this is made up of atoms. Atoms are mini universes, protons, neutrons, electrons, orbiting around each other with magnetic fields. Okay? There is as much space between the protons, neutrons, and electrons as there is between the sun and the moon and the stars in ratio. Atoms are 99.9% .9 space, nothing. Okay? So now what I've just said is, all of this is 99.9% .9 nothing, okay? Now, quantum physicists have been busy trying to figure out what's the 0.01% stuff, you know? And we're very close to unraveling this, and I highly recommend that you read some, some, some books on quantum physics. I, I really like Michio Kaku, who is a Japanese scientist, and he's got a lot on YouTube, too. He's a really wacky guy. But he's talking about the edges of how we are about to unravel the codes and become gods, as really making decisions as creators in regards to reality at both physical level and anatomic level and blah, blah, blah. It's really exciting. So huge paradigm shifts that we're on the edge of in terms of shifting, shifting reality. So most quantum physicists agree that that 0.01% stuff isn't stuff at all. It's light that vibrates at a frequency and it appears to have some reality and that light is manipulated by thought. Wow. So then what's happening here is this is all a weird little light show. <laughs> We're all in some weird wacky light show. And we believe it's real and so we call it reality. And yet it's a weird wacky light show. Okay? And so here we are and what's interesting about this, you know, the thought that, that manipulates this light is there's one key problem that they're trying to figure out at this point, which is the observer observing the light actually makes the light appear in different ways. So if you come in with a premise, the light will be manipulated by your premise. So how do we objectively look at subatomic um, light? But here's the biggest problem. Subatomic light has consciousness also and is observing back. Uh-oh. Okay? So every aspect of being is actually watching us. You know? That's pretty crazy. So when we first started doing the first experiments in the atom bomb, and they were breaking up atoms at this molecular level, what happened for a long time was the experiments were all failures because people would come in and didn't believe it was going to happen. And so it didn't. And the more and more people started to believe, the more and more it was, this is the truth, and now it happens. We all believe it. Hmm. So what would happen if we all decide to believe something different? What if we decide to start really believing more that we're infinite, eternal, and whole? And that we aren't this corporeal mass? What if we decide that this material world that we've created isn't all as important as we think it is? And that we can shift it and manipulate it at, at will? You know, we've got this interesting thing going on, first time ever on the planet, a couple of things. One is, we create the internet, we create, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the um, web, the, and the web is really like the Akashic Records. Are you familiar with the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records are... According to Sanskrit, there's a place where everything, every thought, every action, every breath, every everything is recorded. It's fully recorded. Everything that has ever happened is fully inscribed in the Akashic Records. Okay? It's there. Well, we're creating the Akashic Records on the web. Any thought, any question, anything you ever have, boop, tap into the Akashic Records. It's called Google. Okay? Got a question? Google it. Okay? And every piece of information about anything it happens to be right there at our fingertips. Okay? And we've got these computers that are reflecting back to us this infinite possibility that we're infinite, eternal, and whole. Okay? Time is speeding up. 
You know, and at this point, we're all so impatient with the way things go. Like, I know if I'm sitting at my computer and, oh my God, this picture has to download and I have to wait. I mean, it's like so frustrating. I have, I have to wait like near like a second rather than the spontaneous, you know, picture comes up. You know, that's the level at which we, we've gotten to, to frustration around what we actually know to be true. We know ourselves as infinite, eternal, and whole. We know ourselves as infinite and eternally connected to each other. We're now creating devices that reflect this back to us. I'm connected at any time to my daughter. Hi, we can FaceTime. Good night, honey. Love you too. She's in Chicago. I'm here. Wow. Here she, here she is. We're in real time. Real time together. Wow, but the truth is, put that device down, we're still in real time together. But now we're getting these devices to show us that we have this ability, we created them. And there will quickly be a time when we look at these things and think, those are archaic. You know, we're, we're forming and creating things to remind us of who we are and paradigm shift is really coming. Mm -hmm.